You know, I've been a chef for 40 years and I am crazy about knives. Wherever I travel in the world, I tend to want to bring back a knife or some kind of kitchen equipment from that place just to remind me of the place. So you can imagine I've got a lot of knives, but I want to talk to you about which ones I really use, which ones you might find really useful. Um, so let's just start with chef's knives because for me, a chef's knife, and I've got them here in my knife block, um, I have two different kinds of chef's knives that I reach for really regularly. And this is the knife, or these are the knives that I reach for more than anything else in my knife block. Um, so this is a Western style style uh, knife, chef's knife, and you can see that it has quite a curve on the end here. Um, so when you're holding it, and this is one of the longer blade ones that I really like a lot, it feels really comfortable and weighted in my hand, equally weighted back and front, which is what you're looking for. Um, and I can do a lot of fast rocking and chopping with this chef's knife. Now this is one that's done in the Japanese style, the Santuko, and it is flatter on this side um, and it's got a kind of wide blade. This particular one has the divots, so they say that that makes the food sort of release from the blade a lot easier. I don't know if I know that that's true or not. Both of these have wooden handles, but that's not all that important. Um, this was one that I bought for myself as a gift and this was one that was given to me as a gift, but I'm looking for something that's just evilly, e equally weighted so that I can sort of let go, holding it with my middle finger, and it's going to be weighted equally front to back. You've got to find something that feels good in your hand, and you need something with a long enough blade and a wide enough blade that you can kind of scoop things up with, with it. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I use the most. My second most used piece of, of cutlery a paring knife. Now this is one that they call the bird's beak because it's curved down, very pointed, easy, very inexpensive, easy to get in there and, and peel things with, or if you have to dig out a core of something, it's very useful for that. I have another one here, and this is sort of goes back to my collection that I've gotten when I've been away from home. This is the French uh, Sabatier style one. It is a paring knife that's very pointed here, but you'll notice it has a discolored um, metal blade here. That's because it's low carbon steel. Now you can really sharpen this one very, very easily, as opposed to say this high carbon steel blade which you have to work at sharpening more because it's just a harder piece of metal but any of those will work I always want to have what I kind of call my junk paring knife around never an expensive one I can use it to do all kinds of things that are not necessarily sanctioned in the professional kitchen but I can I could use the back of it to open up a bottle cap or whatever I mean I just like to have one thing that is my utility knife now, a lot of people would tell you that you need a real utility knife, which looks like this. I don't find that I grab it all that frequently, but you might find that it fits your hand really well and that you could do a lot of fast chopping with it. So feel free to get that. Um, if you're going to do a lot of bread baking, then you're going to want a serrated knife. Or if you do a lot of uh, cake baking and you want to slice the, the layers apart, a serrated knife will be good for that. And then if you do a lot of roasting of meats or sushi making, then you're going to probably want a slicing knife. You notice that it has a very thin blade and it's very long. That makes it easy to cut through things and make beautiful slices. Uh, of course, in your knife block, you're going to want a pair of kitchen shears. I use these things all the time. I cannot emphasize enough how important shears are and you're going to want to have a steel for sharpening the blades of your knives. All that said, and I always recommend a knife block to set on the countertop so you can easily grab things. Some of you probably want to store your knives in a drawer. And this is where I am going to pull the curtain back and show you a little bit more of my collection. It's not the whole collection, but over here I have a drawer of knives. And you can see that I have a knife block in the drawer uh, that has slats and you just put everything down in it. I've got some extra steels over here, some sharp sharpening stones in here. It's all beautiful 
stuff, a lot of which I have collected when I have been traveling. Um, odds and ends, I just want to talk to you about every one of them because I think they're like super cool things. Now, one other piece of cutlery that you might want to think about is a cleaver. So this is a cleaver that I brought back when I had the opportunity to go to Hong Kong and I went to a professional uh, store and I purchased this one. Everybody that works with these large cleavers loves the fact that you can scoop things up with them really easily. Um, but the, the, the motion is very different than working with a chef's knife where I'm doing this kind of stuff a whole lot. With this one, I'm doing a lot more straight up and down that's the way that that one is typically used but this is the one that I really wanted to show you here this is a cleaver a very heavy cleaver that my wife bought 50 years ago when she lived in Taiwan and you can see it's low carbon steel so it's got the discolored blade but you can sharpen it really easily um, and this one is not only uh, prized possession because just of nostalgia alone, but it's a really great piece of ki kitchen equipment, which is where we should stop this thing. Because if you buy good knives, you will have them your entire life. The Investment might seem big at the beginning, but I have all of my original knives because I bought good knives to start with. Don't buy a set of knives, buy the ones that feel good in your hand and buy ones that you think will be useful for you in your kitchen. That is my advice.